All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. How's everybody doing? Still awake? <laughs> All right. Um, so my name's uh, James Labaki. Um, I work in the uh, cloud business unit at Red Hat. Um, and this is Oleg. You wanna... Yeah, I'm, I'm the uh, co-founder of ManageIQ, and I'm now uh, running uh, software engineering for cloud forms at Red Hat. Yep, so today we want to talk, to talk to you a little bit about unifying the management of OpenStack with uh, uh, public cloud providers, your existing data center virtualization, and uh, some other concepts as well. Um, so for the agenda, we'll, we'll take you briefly through um, uh, something called uh, cloud forms that Red Hat has and what, what we mean by hybrid cloud management at Red Hat um, and where it fits into Red Hat's OpenStack management strategy. Um, and then um, we'll dive into some of the specific features. Oleg will take you through the platform architecture, what it is. Uh, and then we'll go through a couple of demonstrations of, of the OpenStack support that we just recently announced. All right, so you know, uh, Red Hat recognizes that the, the role of IT is changing, right? Uh, IT is becoming a service provider to the business, so no longer are we serving up uh, machines on physical infrastructure uh, to, um, uh, to, to end, end users. They're actually expecting IT to basically deliver these services through private cloud, public cloud, and even IT using public clouds uh, to host services. So really, it's this evolution to hybrid IT that we all recognize. So again, while the IT consumer used to be uh, really uh, consuming applications and services um, on traditional infrastructure, physical and virtualized uh, highly. Um, really what's been happening is we all know the IT consumer's been using public cloud and public infrastructure as a service, right? That's uh, what, what this has done as the con IT consumer has been using public infrastructure as a service and public paths is that their expectations are, are beginning to rise. So that's, that's creating a huge demand on enterprise IT organizations uh, to deliver self-service, elastic infrastructure, uh, rapid environment delivery, and accelerating service delivery. So all this pressure is starting to come on to IT organizations to do this, right? And um, at the same time, IT organizations are trying to balance agility and openness and uh, choice um, and leverage their existing investments, uh, which is why you guys are here, right? So um, understandably, when you start talking about uh, OpenStack, uh, it's IT organizations and service providers as well trying to build uh, more efficient um, uh, you know, IT infrastructures that can deliver these capabilities of self-service and elastic infrastructures. So, um, and underlying that, they're interested in building shared services between their existing investments uh, to bring those to, to bear. Um, but what, what we're going to be talking about today is really this hybrid cloud management layer. So while you can, uh, you know, you don't really solve a fundamental problem of complexity if all you do is add in another silo um, of you know, efficiency uh, with something uh, like a private cloud technology. Um, likewise with, uh, with platform as a service. So what we're really going to focus on is uh, the hybrid cloud management layer. So why is this important to the folks at OpenStack, right? You might be thinking, how is this relevant to you? Well, one is um, if you don't have a, a hybrid cloud management platform, it's very difficult to migrate existing workloads um, and determine which workloads are best to move on to a private cloud that's based on OpenStack. Um, and likewise, if you're a public, if you're a, a public cloud provider that's basing uh, your uh, public cloud on OpenStack, understanding having a hybrid cloud management strategy that allows your users to bring their workloads uh, to OpenStack is important. So when we talk about OpenStack at Red Hat, there's really kind of three key areas that uh, Red Hat works on um, OpenStack. Uh, first is through uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform. So that's providing a stable, secure um, lifecycle for OpenStack. So if you're familiar with Fedora to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, you probably heard uh, Brian and Mark talking this morning about how we're going to, you know, basically doing the same thing with Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform. The second is through uh, instrumentation APIs and allowing for automation. So this is all of our work we're doing in the in the community itself. So again, you heard um, Mark talking about Tusker this morning and Triple O, and these and there's a number of communities including Solometer. This is really all the instrumentation that's going to be required for us to be able to bring a cloud management platform on top of there. And the third, the third area we work in is the cloud management platforms. This is Red Hat Cloud Forms, uh, which then basically leverages the instrumentation, APIs, and automation to provide a, a hybrid cloud management solution on top of OpenStack. So the capabilities that, that our hybrid cloud management platform delivers are um, all these. So approval and workflow, compliance, self-service, basically all the operational capabilities you'd expect. Um, and with regards to OpenStack, uh, we're doing this by integrating with uh, Nova, Solometer, AMQP, Heat, Glance, and Puppet are actually future integration points. So today, we're integrating with the Nova API, Solometer, and the AMQP event bus. Um, 
One thing to note is that uh, CloudForms actually supports both uh, your data center virtualization, so VMware vSphere, um, Red Hat Enterprise virtualization, as well as public cl cloud on Amazon EC2 as well. All right, so hand it over to Oleg. He's going to take you guys through kind of what, you know, the, the platform architecture here. Yeah, so um, the, the CloudForms uh, product is built on um, an acquisition that Red Hat made last year um, of Manage IQ. The uh, platform architecture is uh, kind of a revised LAMP stack. It's uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, Postgres, Apache, and uh, Ruby on Rails. Uh, we deliver uh, uh, CloudForms as a virtual appliance, uh, a virtual machine. So uh, typically people download it and uh, they're installed minutes later. Um, a lot of our customers, uh, when we go on, on site and do POCs, a lot of them are seeing value in uh, within the first hour, the first two hours. Um, in terms of scalability, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna give you guys an overview. There's, um, so there's a virtual appliance. Inside the virtual appliance, you can have workers. A worker is just a process within a virtual appliance. Um, there's many different types of workers, probably 15 or 20 different types of workers, um, each with its own kind of uh, role of what it does. Um, each appliance can have a role, and based on that role, some workers can will be started or won't be started. You can also designate um, some uh, appliance roles to be primary on one appliance and secondary on another appliance. So if one appliance uh, goes down, it'll fail over to, to the secondary. <clears throat> um, there's also a notion of zones uh, within CloudForms, which allows you to map providers um, to appliances. So if you have, say, um, one OpenStack instance and you want three appliances to point at it to do different things, um, you can configure that to happen, or if you have a vSphere or whatever. Um, and finally, there's a notion of a region, um, which holds the, the data for all the zones. Um, and you can actually do uh, multi-regioning with um, replication going up to a master region for reporting on many different installations of CloudForms. All right, so um, one of the things is that basically we, we've, uh, the way we kind of package this up is that uh, we deliver everything as something called Red Hat Cloud Infrastructure. So you can go pull the hybrid cloud management yourself, uh, but there's also an offering where we basically provide either Red Hat Enterprise virtualization for your data center vert, along with Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform. So if you have cloud-based workloads that uh, you want to use with the hybrid cloud management as well. So um, just to take you through a, like how this would typically be deployed, um, so you, you guys are probably familiar with uh, data center virtualization, uh, whether it's VMware vSphere-based or Red Hat Enterprise virtualization-based. In this case, you have a set of hypervisors. You have some management networks behind there with uh, shared storage, in this case, some block storage. And you've got uh, an, an, uh, a management system. So this is Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization Manager, which is based on the Overt project. Um, but you could similarly think of that as vCenter. So this is your traditional data center virtualization. So inside that manager, um, you've got you know, an, an, a history database with metrics for how your virtual machines are performing. So this is your traditional data center. This is great. You get a bunch of you know, CapEx improvement, um, you know, less cooling, less power, more VMs on a single, uh, more systems running on a single piece of physical hardware. Um, so then what, what would happen is um, as the business grows, they realize that they don't only just want CapEx improvements, they want OpEx improvements. So this is kind of you know, your... Uh, cloud based on data center virtualization. They deploy an appliance, uh, CloudForms appliance in this case, which is highlighted in blue there, as a workload on there. And then basically, uh, the CloudForms appliance, uh, which is, um, uh, has, has these components inside of it, including uh, something called the VMDB, basically would connect to the traditional data center virtualization to begin harvesting all that information. So it's pulling capacity utilization data, it's collecting events, and it's getting state relationship and configuration data from that deployment. Um, so this is the state that we find a lot of our uh, customers actually in, right? Um, and now what they're beginning to investigate is how do I start to leverage OpenStack? And so what they don't want to do is, uh, in, in conversation, what they don't want to do is have a different management framework for reporting and collecting all that data. So what CloudForms allows them to do is, one, they could, they could actually begin to deploy their OpenStack using Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform. 
So this is for their cloud-based workloads. So on the right, they still have their traditional data center virtualization running. On the left-hand side, they begin to build out their OpenStack cloud. So on the left, you've got your compute nodes and your controller nodes. Um, and this is inside of uh, their controller nodes, they might be running some of these services. So you know, whether it's Solometer or the AMQP uh, message bus or the Nova API, those are the particular areas that we hook into uh, with, uh, with cloud forms. So what they could then do is deploy another appliance um, on their OpenStack instance. So we deploy the OVF um, installation of this CloudForms appliance um, in both uh, OVF, and we also provide it as a QCAL file that you can load into Glance. And then they just launch another image on that side, and they can then federate their CloudForms deployments. They still have one UI they go to, and they can get reporting metrics across both their data center virtualization and their private cloud based on OpenStack. Um, so, at the end of the day, this is kind of what it, what it lays out to. So you've got Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization providing your virtualization layer, um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack platform, and then you have Red Hat Cloud Forms pr providing the, the hybrid cloud management between the two. Um, one thing I did want to point out, uh, for those of you that were in some of the other sessions around um, OpenShift, uh, the platform as a service offering, uh, those run as virtual machines on top of infrastructure. So in this case, um, if you were running your platform as a service, um, you could see that you know, the brokers and nodes, if you're familiar with the terminology, have uh, open interfaces as well. And this is going to be, become important because as we, uh, as, as we move to kind of unify the uh, operations management, we're not just going to go horizontal across providers from private uh, infrastructure as a service clouds and virtualization and public clouds. We're actually going to go up um, into the application layer as well and begin to unify that. So what I'd like to do, um, we kept the... Uh, hopefully kept most of the marketing to a minimum. Now we'll dive into demos. Does that sound good? All right, so the first, the first thing I want to show you guys is uh, adding a provider uh, to OpenStack. So let me just flip to here. All right. Let's take you through. Adding a provider to CloudForms, you mean, right? Yeah, sorry. Adding a provider, to, uh, an OpenStack provider to CloudForms. So this is the CloudForms management engine uh, UI. Uh, it's a web UI that's loaded on the, that's, that runs on the appliance. Uh, when you log in, you'll notice um, there's actually, uh, uh, you're, you're greeted with a dashboard. There's a couple of menus up at the top. Um, under the infrastructure and providers, you're going to have your traditional data center virtualization providers, VMware vSphere and Red Hat Enterprise virtualization. Um, but there's also a tab for uh, cloud providers now that's been added in CloudForms 3. And so when you, when you go to clouds and providers there, you're going to see a number of, uh, of providers. There's an Amazon provider, so we've discovered a couple of regions. You also see there's an OpenStack provider that's already been discovered. Um, so these are the two providers that we have. But if we wanted to add a new provider, um, we can simply go up to uh, Configuration and select Add a New Cloud Provider. Under Type, we'll select OpenStack. And basically, you could start to enter in uh, some basic information. What user you want to connect to the OpenStack environment. So that's a Keystone user. Um, and the host name that you want to use to connect to that. So this would be your controller nodes on your, uh, on your OpenStack deployment. Uh, an IP address. And that's basically it. On the right-hand side, you'll see another credentials. There's a default credential, and there's an AMQP cr credential that you can actually use to connect to the event bus as well. So you can validate the credentials, and once, you, uh, once the validation is successful, you can add the provider. And you'll notice it's running there. So uh, just with a couple of simple credentials, you can connect to the OpenStack environment. And then what happens is uh, the discovery process will begin. And you could check off the provider and force it here. So you could you know, refresh the, the information on the provider. And CloudForms will go out and uh, you know, spin up a new worker thread and go ahead and discover all the, uh, the images and instances and all that sort of stuff. So after just a few seconds, you can see well, there's, there's still zero in there because the job was running here, but uh, after just a few seconds, the, uh, the provider will refresh, and you'll start to see information in there. So pretty simple to add a, add a new provider. All right. So you'll see here there's, it discovered the availability zones, the flavors, the security groups, and the instances and images in there. All right. All right, so the next one. I want to take you through was uh, uh, reporting. Uh, so um, 
So CloudForms connects to the uh, to Solometer and actually uh, grabs the metrics on an interval uh, for what's going on there and actually provides in-depth reporting of the uh, the instances running on there. And also, uh, so this is this is pretty pretty nice because you could actually begin to report uh, across virtual machines running on your data center virtualization, um, and you could report against instances running on uh, OpenStack as well. So whether that's Rev or vSphere or even Am instances running on Amazon, you can begin to normalize some reporting across all those different uh, environments. Uh, so you'll notice here's my OpenStack provider. If I go and select the instances, there's two instances running. Uh, it's a small, small OpenStack uh, deployment here. Um, and I'll select one of the instances here. So this is a, a, just an instance that's running Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but it could be running uh, Windows or another distro of Linux as well. And then um, from here, you get a bunch of information about the instance. Uh, Oleg will talk a little bit later about the roadmap and some of the things we're going to be providing in here uh, from a you know, drift history standpoint and, and all this other stuff that's going to be happening that we already provide on the data center vert. But up at the top, you'll see there's a monitoring button, and you can actually select utilization. And what's going to be presented here is a graphical representation of all the data in Solometer that we've pulled from, uh, from the OpenStack deployment. Um, so you'll see, in this case, I just added the provider, so I have to switch to hourly. Uh, from an interval standpoint. And then I'll begin to see the uh, average CPU usage, disk, and, uh, and network as well. Um, so this is just driving into a single instance uh, to get all that data. Um, and it's also, since we're gathering the events, you can actually start to correlate events uh, to spikes on that timeline. So if you would right click on the disk IO when you see that little spike, you can actually say, show me all the events that happened that we got from the AMQP event bus at this time. And you can begin to do some root cause analysis as well. So, all right, and then under reports, so that's kind of a, an active view of an instance, but if you would go to reports here, um, this is where you can actually start to drill into uh, things such as instance and VM performance. So here's just a simple report that we generated. There's uh, like hundreds of reports that come out of the box, uh, but this is one that I created called instance and VM performance. And basically, it's providing you with CPU utilization of both virtual machines running on uh, Red Hat Enterprise virtualization and VMware. Alongside, uh, you'll notice that there's... Uh, uh, instances as well in here that are showing. So my RHEL 6.4 instance is showing, obviously, very low utilization based on the solometer. Uh, there's nothing running on them. But you can see that you can see the VMs is right alongside the instances in that uh, report. Um, and you can also begin to uh, generate um, OpenStack migration reports. So if you want to see the percentage of CPU that's been over allocated on in, uh, virtual machines from VMware, you can begin to do that here. Maybe you just want to see ones that have been tagged as QA or development resources that meet a certain criteria. You can begin to develop those, uh, those reports here. Um, and just to show you, you can actually go in and customize all these reports. So there's ones that come out of the box, which are in yellow, and then the, the blue ones are kind of ones that have been custom developed. Um, and just to show you the number of fields you can, you can basically put into these reports, um, it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. So, all right. So that's the reporting side. The, 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 the third piece we want to show you was chargeback. So um, you know, while Solometer provides you with a lot of data, um, it doesn't provide you with the ability to create kind of a rate table for chargeback and then apply those. Um, and CloudForms has been doing this on, in, in uh, virtual environments already um, and, and with, with public cloud providers already. But uh, now we're adding this for OpenStack. So when you go up, you can select chargeback. And in here, you can actually begin to define uh, rate tables. Um, so you'll notice underneath here, there's a rate table for compute and storage. If I select the compute uh, default rate table that was set up, it's giving me an allocated or a usage um, uh, rate table. So I can charge by the CPU allocation or by the CPU used. And I can also do a fixed CPU cost as well and do some things with memory and network you can see there as well. And then I can assign them. When you assign them, you can actually tag. Um, uh, CloudForms has a very rich uh, tagging uh, implementation. So you can actually have everything that gets discovered in your OpenStack environment get tagged automatically based on uh, various uh, rules that you can set up. So in this case, um, I just did a default and just put everything under the default table. But if I wanted to, I could actually tag development workloads and QE workloads or different lines of business for, for chargeback. And you'll notice this is a chargeback report here. So there's two instances running on my OpenStack environment. I was able to take the solometer data and then apply a rate table to it to provide chargeback for my OpenStack environment. All right. Which 
trying to think if there was any other uh, thing else on here. All right, the last one is self-service. So there's really kind of two concepts of self-service inside of uh, cloud forms. Um, and while Horizon provides self-service for OpenStack, uh, it, it, some, of the, some of the areas that it's lacking are really um, you know, the ability to do workflow, quota enforcement, um, you know, approvals, and those sorts of things. So that's re really what uh, cloud forms is designed to do. So if I go to, if you select the services and workloads tab in the appliance, you'll notice there's a bunch of uh, you know, VMs and instances running. You could filter them using the global filters on the left. But on the right-hand side, you can also go to life cycle, life cycle and provision. And just to take a quick stopping point here, basically the, this entire user interface is driven by role-based access control and tagging. So you can actually um, limit what the user sees. So if this was just a self-service user, I could limit him to not be able to see all these different virtual machines. He just gets a simple catalog interface, which we'll see later. Uh, but in this case, um, when I'm logged in as the administrative user here, I'm going to be able to just go see all the different uh, in images and glance, templates in VMware, templates in Rev, um, and AMIs in Amazon that I have registered to this. Um, but when I scroll all the way down to the bottom, those are all AMIs in Amazon. But you'll notice I have a simple image, RHEL 6.4, that's associated with glance in my OpenStack deployment in Boston. I'll select that and hit continue. And then from there, I get a default dialog. This dialog is the default dialog that comes out of the box. But you, under that Automate tab, we won't show it here, but you can go in and customize that entire dialog. If you want to limit it to certain fields, you can do all that sort of stuff as well. So um, in, in this case, you know, it's asking for some uh, things like an email address, first name, last name. Under Properties, you'll notice that we actually discover the instance flavors. So those will pre-populate automatically in here, along with guest access key pairs, uh, floating IPs. Uh, you know, so if you've got those defined on your OpenStack environment, it'll pick those up. Um, it also does cloud init as well. So if you want to push in, uh, you know, to have some user data injection via cloud init, you can do that as well. Um, so you can go ahead and provision that way. The other way that uh, you know, a lot of users are starting to move to is this service catalog approach. Here you'll see I just defined a very simple service catalog, um, and it's got one dev instance in it. And here you can actually go and order that instance just by hitting an order button. And then uh, it's basically going to launch the same instance on the other end, but in this case, uh, it's a uh, kind of a, um, a customized dialog. So when the user selects order, um, it's going to uh, just give them a, you know, ask them for a first name or a last name. So. so. So customized dialogues with, uh, with self-service, quotas, workflow, all that sort of stuff inside there. Let me flip back to that. So that's, that's a really simple demonstration. Um, if you guys are interested, too, um, feel free to stop by the booth at any time. And we've got, a, we've got these appliances running live, so we can actually show you um, a lot more in depth. Yes. Um, I guess one, two last things to highlight. One is um, all that, a lot of customers have existing CMDBs and event consoles. So this exposes a full web services API that you can integrate with as well. Um, so uh, if you have you know, a, a favorite service catalog or existing uh, IT operations management tools, the idea is this can uh, be layered in, in between them to provide all that automation with the underlying platforms. Um, so that's, that's what it's meant to do. So um, from a strategic direction standpoint, before I hand it back over to Oleg on some of the roadmap uh, things, um, this is really where we're going, right? We're, we're basically providing these capabilities on the left, um, and we're really going to drive them across all the way from storage to infrastructure as a service to virtualization through the OS up to the development tools. Um, uh, you know, we're fortunate at Red Hat to be involved in open source communities in all of these. Um, and as Oleg's going to discuss, we're, we're, we're excited to be uh, doing the same thing with, uh, with CloudForms. So going forward, um, I just want to lay, uh, wanted to uh, share w what we're going to be focusing on um, in future releases of CloudForms. Uh, so last night uh, or this morning, we announced uh, CloudForms version 3. Uh, we're now planning uh, the next release of CloudForms. And uh, some of the items here are, will make it and some, some won't. Uh, we'll have better clarity in, in the coming weeks and months. Um, so the first thing is um, open sourcing. Uh, we're looking at uh, open sourcing CloudForms, obviously. 
Um, if any of you are interested in uh, participating in that, you know, earlier or kind of getting uh, getting involved, um, please send us an email at that email address up there. And uh, once we uh, once we go live, we'll certainly uh, you know let you all know. Um, one of the other things that we're working on is integration with identity management or the free IPA project that's out there um, to allow us to uh, integrate with various uh, LDAP systems and uh, in a nice, clean way. Uh, we're also looking at uh, adding more providers. Uh, so there's cl both cloud provis pr providers and infrastructure providers that we're looking at adding. There's Microsoft ones um, that we want to add, SCVMM and Azure. Um, there's, uh, and we also want to go deeper on, on some of the other ones. We want to um, uh, add more uh, support in, uh, in Amazon, in OpenStack, which I'll be discussing, um, in vSphere and Rev. We kind of want to go both deeper and wider uh, on the provider side. Um, on the provisioning side, we're looking at integrating with Foreman. If you guys have heard of that project, that's one of the things that we're looking into. Um, on the config management side, uh, we're looking at uh, integrating with Puppet and Chef, so you can actually uh, uh, do configuration management of, of uh, the newly provisioned VMs um, through Puppet or Chef scripts, but in a native kind of way. Um, <clears throat> We're also looking for uh, looking at um, integrating with OpenShift, kind of allowing you full visibility into that and allowing uh, uh, cloud forms to kind of visualize the gears and 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 uh, let you move workloads between VMs and and gears. Um, we're also looking at composite services. So you saw some of the services that are uh, that uh, James just showed. Uh, about like ordering uh, an OpenStack VM, uh, you can actually use um, that same service catalog to make composite services, three-tier web apps or things like that that's already in the product, but we want to start uh, leveraging it to have specific types that with a back end of heat and, and uh, cloud formations. On the OpenStack side, <clears throat> uh, these are kind of the things that we're looking at. So. Uh, on vSphere and uh, Rev, we actually uh, have a technique where we uh, look at the um, bits of an image, and uh, without starting it or anything, we, uh, you know, introspectively go through it and can read anything on that uh, on that system. So, <clears throat> for OpenStack, we're looking at uh, doing image analysis. So that so that if, if CloudForm sees an image, it can actually see what's installed on it, what packages. Um, and once you have that visibility, you can see what VM, with the uh, genealogy capability of kind of seeing what VMs are derived from an image, um, now you can start seeing um, the insides of VMs um, or instances. <clears throat> uh, Furthermore, for instances that are that uh, live on uh, uh, Cinder, um, we want to uh, be able to do the same kind of analysis uh, of the insides of, of, of those instances as well. Once we have that information, we can start doing policies on it. We can start doing drift analysis, how things are changing. Um, so it kind of allows us to do a, a, a lot of, opens up a lot of new functionality. Uh, <clears throat> in the current release of Cloud Forms 3, we didn't really focus on uh, multi-tenancy, so that's one of the things we're taking back and we'll be looking at. Um, a lot of customers uh, have asked about um, uh, software-defined networking, specifically uh, when provisioning, um, to make sure that we can provision an instance and. Um, set up m more than its floating IP. Um, we're doing, uh, we've done similar stuff already on Amazon where we uh, started integrating with their VPC layer. We kind of want to do the same thing on OpenStack. 
<clears throat> in terms of Glance and Cinder, we actually want to uh, give you full visibility from Cloud Forms um, onto Glance and Cinder to, to show you what's there. Um, once uh, Salometer kind of is able to emit um, events, not emit events, but uh, provide APIs to, to uh, give us events, we want to start consuming them um, rather than the uh, way we're doing it now, which is by sitting on the message bus, which today is only a in Cloud Forms 3. <clears throat> we sit on the AMQP bus. We're lo also looking at sitting on the RabbitMQ bus. Um, but in reality, I don't think we should be sitting on any bus. I want there to be some API that we can consume instead. Um, finally, we're uh, looking into, uh, if you guys have seen the O Tuscar stuff, um, and if not, you should def definitely stop at the, at the Red Hat booth and take a look. Um, we want to kind of have Cloud Forms uh, provide visibility in, into the resources that comprise the OpenStack Cloud um, so that in a private cloud situation, you now have full visibility into um, your whole infrastructure that's supporting your cloud. Um, and through that, we can uh, offer things like uh, capacity management in terms of when you want to add new hosts or when you want to add new storage. You can kind of uh, get a lot of interesting information that way as well. That's it. Yeah, so um, I think the takeaways are, uh, you know, we've got... Um, the, the same capabilities that, uh, that Manage IQ is bringing across uh, VMware vSphere and Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization, um, you know, since the acquisition, uh, we are bringing those across as cloud forms. We're committed to open sourcing the code. Um, we would love to, you know, if you guys are interested in bringing operations management across OpenStack or any other platform, uh, we'd love to work with you on it. So um, with that, we'll, uh, we'll open it up to any questions. Yep. What was that? The yeah. No. Yeah. So the question was, um, the how does the tagging relate to the chargeback? Um, so the yeah. So the tagging relates to chargeback in that you can assign, um, you assign the, the rates to um, things uh, that are tagged with with something. Um, yeah. So it's completely dynamic. So. For example, on discovery of an environment, uh, you can lay down tags based on what, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in a VMware world, for example, what packages are on a specific operating system. Uh, you can then tag the, the, uh, the system on discovery. And then those tags are then applied to the, uh, are assigned to different rate tables. So it becomes really dynamic. So if a VM changes from development to QE to production in its life cycle via tag, then the rate tables will automatically, the chargeback reports mm -hmm. will automatically update. You don't have to go through and statically assign those. Right. Any other questions? All right. Oh, All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The slides are actually, um, the best way to get them is go to uh, my blog, which is my retirement plan, too. So, <laughs> um, so go there, click on as many ads as you can, and download the slides. I'm just kidding. All right, thanks. Cool. There you go. Only one question, only one half. <laughs>